So again, this is what it looks like beforehand. Let's go ahead and go into the newest tier list, starting with the top three or the 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 first the first <laughs> the first is tier, which is Z, which is the highest tier of the tier list. And uh, guess what? It's gonna be Urgon. Yeah, <laughs> who who would have thought? I still said like Storm Storm, the famous words of uh, Matthew Combs never dies and. You know, until the, until it gets addressed, which I know with Borgos, I know with a two-drop Goku, I know whatever, whatever, right? You still have to draw into, into those answers, and, and if you don't, then you know, Rudigan Storm might still be a prevalent threat. Uh, it will be balanced out a little bit better uh, with those additional cards, but it forces everybody else to get those answers, and as well as forces Rudigan to have those answers as well. So. Um, no, no surprise, and even outside of Storm, Hurtigan still can make a lot of different engines really good because of the draw power, simply from his uh, his awakened side to ditch one, and then the uh, Hoi super combo to ditch one and draw two. Still super powerful and really useful, especially going into the um, into sparking effects and, and things like that. The other one is going to be the Dragon Ball. Wow. Yeah, Shenron leader, the black Shenron leader. So I, I know that, you know, it, it, as I go into this list and these different tiers, I'm going to get a lot of different flack for a lot of different things, especially the next one. But the, the thing about this is that the, uh, the, the Shenron leader kind of makes a lot of different engines and as well as different finishers really, really viable. And if you can get to that and you have answers around that, then it makes it really good, and I think the the sky's the limit when it comes to uh, this man or this this dragon <laughs> in in uh, making decks. And I think uh, the draw power, the versatility, uh, everything makes him a, a really really good leader. And this next one, okay, I'm gonna I'm, again I'm gonna get some flack for it. I'm gonna get some flack, but it's Janemba. And the reason for this is because now we have a new answer. And as we go into the new format, right? And as we go into more and more different things, uh, into the theme booster, into sex to set six, Janemba is always going to be an issue because it is a is a mechanic that no one really, no no other deck really has. And if you don't have an answer, if you don't know how to play around it, I said this before, you're going to have an issue. And he is only here, up here, because he is the only one who can do that. And if I had to rethink it simply because of the the meta or the the whatever you want to call it, the format, I would probably put him in the S tier instead. And that's it, okay. That before anybody tells me other anything else, that is that is literally the only reason why. Yeah. So let's go into S tier. The first one is always going to be <laughs> in my heart a Z tier, but it's going to be the Android six, 17 and 18 leader. Um, Still, I mean, it's, you know, the thing that it kind of goes right now to me is it goes, Hurigan kind of beats everything. <laughs> so, like, Hurigan still gives androids some trouble, uh, regardless of the, the cell chain as well as Shock Death Ball. Hurigan gives Janemba some trouble because it just can't keep up with the multiple attacks that it gives. Uh, and it gives him, or Shenron, some trouble because it... It, it overwhelms him before he can give his get his big baddie out um so i mean that's that's how it is and then janemba loses to androids uh and as well as him and then uh it's a 50 50 kind of toss up for droids droids and uh shenron and then androids kind of beats pretty much everything else here so it, it's just it's just, it's just one of those things that, that you have to kind of take a look at when it comes to uh, balancing out between decks and archetypes. Next one is Trunks, and uh, you know, same thing. Storm, Bright Blue, he's still a really good leader. I, don't, I haven't changed anything as far as my position goes for him. And he was still in the top five, so like, or top eight, whatever you want to, I, I'm pretty sure he was top five. Yes, Tony Argus with Trunk Storm was top five in national. So if, you, if that is an S tier, I, I don't know what is. And yeah, there's not really much else to say. I kind of already talked about it in the last video. Uh, announcer, yeah, okay, all right. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen, listen. Okay, listen. So announcer loses to a number of different decks, and I think I can understand if you believe he should be a tier down now. But if you go against a pretty good announcer deck 
with any of the top decks and if you haven't played against an announcer I think he still has some merit for it so he has answers to cell chain and even against super 17 um, in in uh, having the master Roshi and the grandpa combos he has an answer to uh, storm just well he doesn't really have an answer but he still has access to sense of being he does still have access to a lot of defensive options in order to stop that um, and he does have answers to these guys in uh, just sort of overwhelming the board uh, and then going for it but it, I can see why he would be a tier down I think I think out of the whole whole S tier list, he's probably the only one that I, I'm like, eh, maybe he should go a little bit lower, but I think he is still a strong leader. Pan, I already kind of explained this in the previous, uh, the previous sort of thing, or the previous videos, pre the previous thing of talking about the temp 30, 32. And then we have uh, Soul Striker. I still think he is a really good leader, even going into the next team booster with Borgos. Uh, and shutting shutting down his whole leader effect is kind of annoying, but I think he's still really good. Hercule, I don't think he he should be under, underestimated. The reason why Hercule, the, the reason why Hercule wasn't really too like prevalent in the um, in, in nationals is because he was kind of an answer to. The, to storm but even though storm players are figuring out how to play against hercule um but the other thing is that uh he kind of gets shut down by crushes crusher because of pan unless you have another self-awakening method he can get shut down by androids for uh the deadly defender the cell chain super 17 and as well as just dwindling down his hand afterwards and then janemba because he draws so much to defend and because he's he's automatically a 10k who's attacking his leader almost every single time and then milling two and then he draws two so that's a, a total of basically or uh, draws one and basically three cards per turn at the minimum so that that's just not a good matchup and then uh dragon ball just i mean i don't think he, people are uh, testing it enough with hercule against shenron leaders in order to make it effective so that's just me that's just me i think hercule gogeta is still pretty cool um I just, you know, I, I don't think, like, uh, him as a leader, I don't think he should be really moved anywhere else. Frieza, same thing, same thing. Victory Strike, Universe 7, all the same points that I made before. Uh, Super 17, so same thing as uh, Android 17. Some people would say that Super 17 is still better than the Android 17 and 18. I personally don't believe it. The only thing that makes him better is because of his critical and as well as untapped too. That is the only thing that makes him better. Everything else, 17, 18, can do better and or has the advantage over him for draw power, for the plus 5k, uh, for the reduced cost of the androids, everything, right? I think he's more straightforward while these guys can do more versatile things. So, yeah. Krillin, I will now put a little bit of respect on his name only because uh he is a still a really good storm leader he is really still a really good red blue leader even mono blue and i think uh because of the capabilities that he can have he can have or has uh for draw power for being blue etc etc i i think he he deserves to be in the top s list baby vegeta same thing i think he has a lot of good things and tools and everything like I, I I don't know if this is his time yet right I, I think his time is coming in um, in realizing how good he is and uh, playing against him and playing as him more and more often recently I think uh, really opened my eyes of like oh damn this is a good leader <laughs> because of Re revenge death ball because of the minusing because of the quick awakening because of the, the, the draw power and advantage and board control I think he's a really good leader, and I, I don't think people should uh, sleep on him too much. And I think he, he should be reconsidered in taking to locals or taking to a regional or whatever going forward. Yamcha, simply because he's in the top 32, I don't need to say anything else. That's it. Gogeta, and as well as the other Gogeta. So I, I was very close to putting these guys in A tier only because, you know, for uh, this man, he is sort of weak on his. Um, awaken side while this guy is strong on his awaken side uh, even though he only draws one and untaps one 
but because of his awakened side being dropping dropping a card and then they can't negate any time or only can negate one more time if they didn't negate that time or that that uh that turn is super super good and then this man uh, it's the flip side of his flip side is okay in which he gains 5k and then drops a life and then um they can no longer uh have any effects on the board like basically vanilla cards uh are on the board for them so i mean that's that's the thing i think they they both have a lot of potential being blue being gogeta having the exclusive gogeta cards or the goku and vegeta cards and both effects on both sides are really good all right, we're gonna quickly go through the rest of the tiers. So A tier, um, there's only a few different changes. The only changes that I really wanna mention is that uh, some Gohan is here. Uh, I think, again, he has some potential being blue and as well as a Shenron leader. You can, I, I think the, the approaches that people are taking for him are a little up and down. And like, I think there's, there's some goodness in Mono Blue for him. There's some goodness in blue yellow for him. I think there's some goodness in him being a really, really good finisher for the game while you build up different things on the board and as well as uh, in your hand. So I, I think more more people need to experiment with, with him and eventually he's going to have his time. Uh, the blue one. So, OK, uh, <laughs> him, him. Mm, OK, this guy, he's kind of in between the A and B for me His awakening effect or his unawakened effect is very shallow and burst two and then draw one his awakened effect 20k sparking critical is really good and then counterplay uh to drop three is is interesting i don't again i think it's the same thing with gohan in which not enough people are actually experiencing with experiencing with them um and hopefully i don't know if he'll have his time in being really good um but i i think there's potential uh, for him, for 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 being a, a pretty decent aggro leader, and then Sorbet. Not enough. Not I mean, this he has a lot of good tools. He has Cobalas. He has a two drop, uh, two drop that summons up four, and then he has a lot of ye good yellow cards that he can have. Uh, and he has Shigesh. I mean, <laughs> if you want to go pretty pretty degenerate with it, um, that's that's not a bad idea. I feel like so. I, I think he is sitfully, rightfully so, into the A. Everybody else. I don't think should be moving. I am not going to move Broly. Shut up. And then <laughs> Jackie Chun should still be here because he is a he he is a, a direct threat against uh, deadly defenders as being his awakened side who can attack and they can't combo with 20k and draw. Just is really good. And then everybody else I've kind of already explained last video. B tier. So the only changes here uh, are really the two peel off leaders. Uh, just to add in the Shenron leaders, there's not really much to say about them. The the five drop Goku, as I said before, for green is really good. And then him drawing three and then finishing the game for 30k is not too bad. And he has a lot of red access, just like uh, active image technique and everything else that comes with it. And then C tier, some of the newer, uh, newer cards like the Black Massain as well as Master Roshi are in there. You know, Master Roshi, I... I so putting things in rest, okay, or is okay every single turn without paying anything is is not bad. Um, he does have access to Shigesh if you want to go that way, and Shigesh is is quietly quietly uh, going to be lower and lower into the importance and priority list. And as that happens, you know, going into the next competitive format, I think people are going to be considering to put him or put yellow leaders with him in the main board. So. Just to keep that in mind. And then Black Mass Saiyan, I, I think he has some potential. I think there is some goodness to be had with him. I haven't experimented with him enough, but the builds that I've been seeing, he looks pretty creative in, in making, and um, he can put some work in. And of course, the D tier is everything else. If I miss anything, it's probably because there's a reason for it. <laughs> Let me know what you think I may have missed. Let me know your opinions on this. If I got something right, got something wrong, like this like subscribe if you're new sign up for the tournament join the discord and i'll see you the next one Later.